Halloween isn't the only reason to get dressed up anymore. There are plenty of fan conventions out there, Horror Hound, Comic Con, things like that, where cosplayers love to get together and dress up as their favorite characters from their favorite movies. Chucky from the Child's Play movies is one of horror's biggest icons, and this year, myself, my baby mama, and my mother put together a costume for my baby boy. And I'm going to show you what we did to make that happen. Welcome to the video. So we bought most of this stuff at Goodwill. The overalls actually came from Walmart. Baby Mama got this stuff for us together. Uh, we ended up having to go buy an, an additional red shirt because I noticed that Chucky had red sleeves, red cuffs on his sleeves, uh, as well as a red collar on his rainbow pattern shirt. We got a shirt that had obviously a lot more excess so that we, we could put the cuffs at the bottom of the pants uh, on the overalls to really uh, add that extra detail. And as you can see here, we've already got the collar uh, put on this shirt, but we're gonna show you all the sewing stuff that you're gonna need to, uh, to uh, get started here and get this going. I must say, if you are not savvy with a sewing machine, if you are not a creative person, you may want to skip this uh, or at least get much better at sewing because it's not a very hard thing to do, but you do need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, this can be extremely frustrating and tedious. As you can see here, we are hemming up the sleeves so that way they fit baby boy's arms just perfectly. Uh, we didn't want anything bunched up or excess or anything like that. So we're hemming up those sleeves and now we're looking to see how tight we need to make the uh, the cuffs for the sleeves and all you got to do is you just use sewing pins uh, and then get it to st sit itself in place and then you hem it up uh, very easily just like so once forward and once backward and then you're gonna cut off the excess off the inside of those sleeves again using sewing pins we're gonna put these in place into the sleeves on the inside of the sleeves uh, you can see that's where we're stitching it up inside there because we had a little excess left over. That's the part that actually is going to be sewn in. And then ever so carefully, we sew it to the sleeve. People kept giving us wonderful praise all night for, uh, for this costume because obviously there's nothing cuter than a baby about two years old wearing a costume of Chucky and really being able to pull it off. And he was just out there having fun. He doesn't know who Chucky is. He doesn't know what he was dressed up as. This was his first Halloween to have any kind of fun or really be involved. Uh, it was a wonderful experience, definitely for sure. Hearing all those people just give him so much praise and talk about how cute he was. Uh, fantastic. So we've rolled up the pant leg here uh, just to see about the excess because we don't want baby boy to be walking all over the cuffs. Uh, that we're about to custom make for this. Uh, one thing about Chucky's cuffs along the bottom is they do go vertically. So we made sure to uh, get about just as much as we needed here just by trial and error. You know, you just put it up on there. There's no reason to measure anything. You don't need to do all that. You just cuff it up there, holding it together with pins uh, just to kind of anchor it into position. And then once you figure out exactly how big it needs to be, uh, you will cut off your cuff and then you will hem it together much like you did the sleeves and then you'll cut off any excess and then we're going to attach it to the bottom of the overalls so we've already hemmed this together and now we're putting some sewing needles in here god bless my mother uh, if she didn't have the skills she has for being just for, from sewing. I never would have gotten this done on my own. That's for sure. We would have ended up copping out and spending over 50 to to $100 for a costume that Baby Boy was only going to wear once. And costumes, even if you spend 50 to to $100 on them, they're not, they're not always that great. Um, there's something a little bit more satisfying about being involved in your child's life. You know, making costumes for your child, especially... Uh, at these young ages and really getting involved 
with what your child is doing and having that kind of connection and that kind of fun and that kind of rewarding um, experience for yourself. There's just really nothing quite like it. So I do highly recommend doing something like that. It just it just adds a little bit more magic to the season, I think. As I mentioned before at the beginning of the video, Halloween isn't the only reason to get dressed up if you're going to a horror convention or something like that and you're bringing your baby along with you. This will knock it out of the park. You're going to get praised. People are going to talk about how adorable little Chucky is. This here is probably the most tedious part of the whole project. What we're actually doing here is we're anchoring the cuff to the inside of the overalls. And at the same time we're attaching the cuff, we're actually hemming up the bottom uh, at the same time. So you're basically killing two birds with one stone. The next step here was for us to uh, super glue these red buttons onto the buttons of the overalls, just to give it that extra detail. Uh, you might want to wait until the very end of the process, the very end of everything before you actually attach those. So it's now time to make the good guys stencil, and by the way I did that was I just printed out uh, the right size of, uh, of the logo on my printer, black and white, and then I used transparencies. Uh, to to uh, to make the stencil with you could use stencil paper. I just didn't have any on hand I don't know where I put it, but luckily I had this as a backup. These are meant for overhead projectors that kind of thing uh, but they work pretty well as a uh, as a stencil as well, so uh, Just put them over the the picture and then I secured the paper to the transparency using blue painters tape and I'm using a exacto knife with a fresh blade to get in here and cut out the, the letters of the logo. Notice how I am basically keeping the X-Acto in one solid place while moving the stencil around in order to cut so that way I'm always cutting in a downward motion easier to control that way Now we're going to test our freshly made stencil and I'm using airbrush to do that. If you don't have an airbrush kit, you could use spray paint, but you're going to have to be aware that you're going to get a lot of overspray. So make sure to cover everything up really, really well. 
an airbrush set doesn't cost very much. You could probably get a pretty decent one for about 40 bucks or less if you don't already have one. If not, a good can of spray paint will do the job. You're spending about seven to eight bucks on a can of spray paint. So the next part here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the centers of the O's and the D. Uh, just that extra added detail. So the way I'm doing that is on the transparency, I am putting down a piece of blue painter's tape, and then I'm gonna secure this part of the logo to that, and then I'm gonna use scissors to cut out those little circles that are inside those letters. And you can see they are very, very tiny pieces. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're putting them somewhere safe, somewhere they're not gonna get knocked onto the floor and you'd be like, damn it, where did those go? Now the point of putting this on the transparency was so that way I had something to peel the, uh, the stencil sticker that I'm essentially making out of the blue painter's tape. Uh, you wanna be able to peel it off. Uh, and so using a transparency really helped with that. Now it's time to put these into place. The way I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out this stencil here just to kind of make it easier to, uh, to manage. So I'm gonna put this into place and then when I'm comfortable with where it is, I'm gonna go ahead and put those sticker pieces into the centers of those O's and that D. So because they're so small, it was easier for me to use the X-Acto knife to get in between the tape and the transparency. Obviously you want to be very, very careful doing that. You don't want to stab yourself with an X-Acto knife. That would be brutal. I don't recommend that. Zero out of ten. Now, after fighting with that for long enough, I finally got it off. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and place it into position. Uh, wasn't very easy with my fat fingers, so I felt like using the X-Acto knife would be a lot easier, and I was right. It went right into place. Uh, it's just easier to maneuver with uh, maneuver. <laughs> it's just easier to maneuver uh, those little bitty pieces with an X-Acto knife like that. Those are in a pretty good position. I am satisfied. But this Dagon stencil keeps wanting to poke up off because this this uh, this this pocket, I'm tongue tied. This pocket here is is kind of uneven. And yes, I am using my cell phone as support underneath. I, I knew it was safe. I knew I wouldn't get any paint on that. Uh, it did help a little bit. Using the back of the Exacto knife, I make sure that those stickers are stuck. And then I, uh, this is, this is right here, this was a mistake, okay? And the reason why I went ahead and put it in here was so you could see uh, how this turned out. These overalls are a bit more of a darker blue. And I was kind of worried that if I were to put the red paint on this that it wouldn't really pop the way it should, that it wouldn't be bright enough. 
consequently, I was correct, but hey, I just wanted to see if I could get away with putting the paint on there directly just to see how that would work. I decided to go ahead and go back over it with white afterwards. By doing that, what you're doing is you are giving the red paint a brighter uh, surface. So that way, when you do put the red down, the red will actually pop. So if you have a darker pair of overalls, uh, I highly suggest that you put white down first and then put your red down. If your overalls are the lighter shade of blue, you could probably get away with just putting the red on there. But this is the way I had to go about doing it. Now we're going back over it with the red to actually get that red to pop the way I wanted it to, just as I mentioned a second ago. Uh, this was leaps and bounds better than the first time over. Not 100% perfect, but uh, with all the praise that we got over Halloween evening, uh, it definitely did the trick. People were very happy seeing little baby Chucky running around. Now for the next part of this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this thing some wear. And to do that, I used some heavy grit sandpaper, a razor blade, and also a blowtorch. So to do the wear, I used this razor blade uh, to cut in some holes uh, to really wear it down and uh, get in there and just make it look like it had been gone through a lot uh, like it had been beat up and and it was years old one thing that i can suggest is uh, pay attention to your edges like around your pockets uh, the sides anywhere like where there's an edge pay attention to those with your razor blade and your sandpaper uh, also notice uh, that i'm in places i am holding the razor blade similar to a pencil uh, now you can see here I'm using the sandpaper to really pull out the string and kind of really give it that wear. The uh, combination of using the razor blade and the sandpaper together, you can really see how that's how that's working out pretty well. You can just really pull out that that threading of the denim uh, with the sandpaper, and it really really helps. The two of those together are just wonderful. Uh, also, you can notice here that I'm using the I'm scraping the razor blade across certain places, uh, not just digging the edge of it in and, and creating holes, rather uh, scraping off pieces of denim and then using again the sandpaper to really bring out the wear look. So here you can see I'm holding the razor blade a lot more like a pencil and basically you're just drawing on the wear. Uh, like I said, it's easier to control the razor blade this way and this, you know, the razor blades are obviously very sharp. This can be dangerous. Be very careful if, when you're doing this. You don't want to cut yourself again. Like I said, using the, the exacto, it would just be brutal. Uh, scraping off all kinds of pieces here around the edge, using the scissors also to... Uh, to really get in there and notch up the edge so that way I can uh, really sell that worn look 
and then using the sandpaper, always using the sandpaper over every single place that I have uh, applied any of the razor blade, um, like the cuts and the, the edging and all that stuff. You really want to use that sandpaper to help bring out the fuzz and the, and the string. Another really cool thing about using actual clothing is it's comfortable. You know, one thing about store-bought costumes, they're not always comfortable. <clears throat> they kind of require you to wear like long underwear and stuff like that underneath of your clothes. Uh, so that way you can keep warm because usually, or at least around here in the Midwest, it gets really cold around that time of year. So it's really nice to actually use real clothing that way, especially for a, for a child, a baby. Uh, that way they're comfortable. Um, they're not going to be com complaining or fussing or trying to take things off. So keep that in mind if you're doing this for your toddler. Moving on to the back side, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to pay attention to the edges of the pockets, the uh, the belt loops, uh, the edges, anywhere there's edges, anywhere these um, the stitching is that holds everything together. I really let it have it with that razor blade. The razor blade thing, it's, it's one of those things like you don't want to be digging too hard. You want to be doing it gradually. You gradually want to be scraping away uh, the new out of this new pair of overalls to really give it that worn look. Now for the fun part. So I'm using a blowtorch here on a very, very low heat. Uh, and what this is doing is it's actually burning it. Uh, you can also notice that I am not keeping the flame in one position for too long. I'm really trying to continuously be moving that flame because we don't, well, we do want some specific points of solid burns. Uh, I don't want the whole thing to catch up into, into flames. I mean, using fire with fabric, obviously <laughs> that's a danger. So we're just ever so slightly uh, gradually moving the flame over the denim. Uh, and you can see in this video, you can see how the denim is reacting to it. And you can actually see the, the charring and the scorching that's going on here. Uh, and that extra level of detail is the thing that's gonna separate your costume from a store-bought costume. This is real, it's actually charred, it's been used with real fire, it's been made with real fire and stuff like that. People love seeing that kind of thing. And as I said, there are some points where I actually just let it kind of catch on fire a little bit. Not too much. Paying extreme attention to that. 
and as soon as it starts to flame up, I would blow it out. Now, after all of this is said and done, uh, and, and it's looking the way I want it to look, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the dryer for about 20 minutes, uh, and that will really uh, get that final look of wear to really poke through. Uh, it'll also, in, in where the charring is, it'll also kind of, um, I guess, disintegrate some of those pieces where the actual charring like was the worst um, and it's going to get that out of there it's going to remove that so there isn't any kind of loose you know flaky pieces all over your baby's skin so make sure that once you're done with this throw it in the dryer for a little bit and let the dryer take care of it This is the final product here, uh, at least for the overalls. The uh, the rest of it's up to you. You know, you're. I'm not showing you how to do makeup in this tutorial. This is specifically uh, the costume tutorial, and and putting makeup on a on a two year old toddler could prove difficult. So we went with something extremely easy. You know, he's only going to be dressed up for a couple of hours, so uh, we didn't pay too much terrible attention to that um, the costume was the real seller of this whole thing for us so we really really had a great time putting this together and I mean just look at how cute he is look at this this is fantastic I mean this whole thing was just such a wonderful experience such a great time I had such a fun time putting it together um, the really kind of cool thing about this was I had thought about you know what would be really cool is if we dressed up our baby like Chucky. And I didn't say anything about it. I just kind of kept it to myself. And then two days later, baby mama was like, I kind of want to dress up baby boy as Chucky. And I was just like, that's it. We're sold. I'm really glad that happened. And I'm really happy with the way things turned out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you appreciate the work that we put into this. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, if you learned something, or if you just had a good time watching it, it was fun, it was, it was interesting to you, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, let us know what you think. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.